Okay, well, thank you for um, joining me. It's sort of quite strange for me to present this without actually seeing faces um, in the room. But anyway, we'll see how you go. So I'm, I'm going to talk about the ORCID experience at the University of Queensland. So we've been very interested in ORCID for a while and one of our staff members has been appointed as an ORCID ambassador, which basically allows her to keep up to date and receive quite a lot of information for ORCID. And we do promote ORCID whenever possible, for instance, in training classes, discussions with researchers. And if anybody sort of emails us and asks us a question about how to sort of what affiliation they should put on their paper, we always take the opportunity to tell them, you know, and whatever you do, don't forget to register for an ORCID. And we've just signed up for an institutional subscription because we plan to roll out ORCIDs through the organisation. The library manages the institutional repository, which we call UQE Space, and we do have an identity management aspect of that, but it's um, it's it's rather static because we haven't made use of the API, ORCID APIs. And users can manage their different identities in a preferences page, which I'll show you in a screen or so. So what we've done is we've allowed um, academics to put in their online identities. And then with a single URL, they can have all of those identities linked. So I'll just show you a couple of pages. So this screenshot here is our preference page on our repository, and you have to be logged in to do this. And you can see that there's an opportunity to manually enter four author identities, um, People Australia, Scopus, ORCID, and Google Scholar. Um, you might say, well, where's researcher ID? Well, because we sort of um, have a different implementation for that, we automatically add that researcher ID. We automatically add the researcher ID to, the, to staff members' profiles. So, I'm, so once staff have actually entered in their author identifiers, they can log in, and if they go to their My Publications, you can actually see on the top right hand corner for this um, researcher that they've got all of their online identities listed. So if they click on any of them, they go to their researcher ID account or their ORCID account. So we've made that possible and we've got about two, just over 200 ORCIDs in the system at the moment. One of the things we were asked to talk about was our business drivers but, and as I said before, the library does host the institutional repository and we're heavily involved in the HERDIC and ERA program. So therefore, you know, it's essential we have good author identification. And just to give you an idea, UQ publishes about 10,000 publications a year. So it is important that we assign the right paper to the right academic. And we've, we do gather our data through Web of Science and the Scopus API and researcher ID. And we do know there's some under-reporting. And when we implemented the Scopus API um, last year, we were quite surprised how many new records we were going, be we got. Because although we knew there was under-reporting, we didn't know how much under-reporting. And we also think it's, it's best practice. And we've got a lot of support from the Office of the Deputy Vice-Chancellor of Research. And they're behind the project, but the library will lead the project. And so you know, the university, like many other universities, have various policies on um, author affiliation on all of the papers. With our workflows, all new academic staff are encouraged to have a researcher ID um, or, or to link their existing account to UQ. And we encourage them to clean up their Scopus identities and we provide information to do that. And with our researcher ID program, it's currently managed by administrators only, but we'd like to move to an author managed process in the future. And in, for instance, we've just gone out and asked a lot of staff for some information for ERA, and we've had over 100 requests for people to link their researcher IDs. So the nuances around the imp implementation is that UQ researchers, probably like every other researcher, is really resistant to admin work. So we're going to have to try and make it as easy for them as possible. And we do appreciate that while 
we know that the library is very important. Researchers are more likely to take note of the project if they're directed to by the DVCR research or the VC. So there are some things we've got to take into account and as part of our communication strategy, we want to get the message out from the highest level possible within the university. And then because this involves IT work, we need to prioritise the development with the work to support ERA and HERDIC. So our plans for the future is to have an application where UQ academics can manage their online identity really easily. And we just, again, want to promote the, um, the, the eSpace URL where it's possible for UQ academics to have a single URL and um, link to their online identities and even sort of link that to their email signature for easy access to their identities. So that's what UQ's experience with ORCID is. Thank you.